everyone and welcome to another episode of the plus cast i am your host taylor very excited to have the amazing riff alicious natalie weiss with me here today how are you doing today natalie riff alicious love that you know that's a loaded question i'm not doing so great but we don't need to get into the details of that so i'm gonna give the um i'm doing great <laughs> So we've got a couple of questions to ask you today. And then if we've got time, we'll get into a little quick fire question round. Yes. So my first question is, could you talk us through your new course, Breaking Down the Rifts? How did it come about um, and what can people expect from it? So this is called the Guide to Breaking Down the Rifts. And basically um, the web series that I created about nine years ago that I started on the road of Les Mis, sort of out of a passion project, kind of turned into this big brand by accident. Um, and I finally kind of put all the ideas that I developed in person classes, developed at in person classes, and throughout listening to all the songs that have come out throughout the years and just collected like a library and like put it into comprehensive modules. Um, so I just ran a Black Friday sale. Um, basically, like I had a really big launch in May and June and it was really successful and then kind of took a break and then. I run a flash sale. So maybe every few months I'll run a little sale. Um, and it's just like helping pop technique because it's so um, prevalent in the market now. And so it just kind of simplifies and makes it less scary. Who would you say it's aimed towards? Who, who uh, would use it? Okay, so basically my dumb answer is anyone, but my main audiences would be like teachers that are like, what do I tell my students when they bring in pop songs? musical theater performers who were like, I could never sing a pop song in an audition. That's a really big audience. And then like hobbyists that are like, I love to sing in my shower and I love all these artists and I could never do that. And I'm like, no, you can, you know? Yeah. And I guess people who also were obsessed with your videos as well. That, and um... whoever wants to laugh, honestly, it's just one of my feedback. Um, one of the feedback things is like, it's so funny and people learn through humor the best. So that's what I try to Yeah, absolutely. Do. What did you think of Six? Oh my God, I was in the front row living my best life. I mean, honestly, like it's, it was so crazy because like, obviously I know the show, yeah. but not like, I know the music. I just really, you know, yeah. um, and with every, like a lot of students are like, I have a final callback tomorrow for the ship, for the tour, for the, you know, so I've been hearing the song so much um, and just like living for the first of all, I'm living for the sparkle in ears. Yeah. Like the fact that they have those on a Broadway stage is like, I mean, I was talking, excuse me, to Mallory, one of the alternates, because I saw her go on and she was like, they're a game changer. So that's amazing. And the harmonies are so tight. Yeah. Um, and like, I, I, I never, I mean, I obviously knew Heart of Stone like first, but those bops, those first two numbers, they just get you. What was your audition like for the Emoji Musical, thinking back a bit now? Um, well, not to be all, but I didn't audition for it. <laughs> um, I was in LA actually doing like a little solo tour in 2019. And I got an email out of nowhere saying, we want to offer you construction worker for this musical. I knew nothing about it. And I sort of was like, oh, okay. And I like really had to think about it because so much of my career has sort of like shifted into teaching more. And like, in terms of, you know, when you're looking at financially, you have to choose. I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this. I've never had a New York lead credit. Like this is huge. So, you know, I really, really wanted to be in a show in Times Square, you know, that has a lot of buzz and had a lot of big cult following, which I didn't know um, that it was going to. Um, and then Funny enough, I don't know if you know this, but the week before the shutdown, we were singing a song called Virus in the show. There's a song that's like virus. And it was the day that like Tom Hanks got COVID. So it's like March 12th. And um, then we had to leave the theater. But like that was the last thing. It was a virus singing where there's a virus. So weird. That's so creepy. Mm -hmm. Did you um, did you originate that role? Were you the were you like No, you I mean I I originated it off Broadway. Um, and the cast album, but um, at the I think at Nymph, Megan Kane originated it, um, and actually she saved the show when I had a vocal injury in the middle of it, and there was no understudy, so they had to call her, and 
she had to like learn the show in a day. So, oh, so it's cool that I'm on the cast album, but she started the yeah. show like two years ago. That's the number one. So on a lighter note, what do you think is the hardest riff that you have ever encountered? The hardest riff is probably the, I haven't done an episode in a very long time, just cause like nothing is long form anymore. Everything is short form. So everything is TikTok, you know, the Avery Wilson riff, I still haven't quite figured out. I'm loose to win. Sometimes you gotta lose. <laughs> Are you serious? I never really do it right on the show. And even like Tori Kelly, PYT, I never really get a good take of it. And I mean, 2013, maybe. That's when I had my old brows and my bob. We won't go there again. What are your top tips without giving anything away from your course? Just quick fire. <laughs> quick fire, not giving anything away. Um, first of all, slow it down in your brain. Put a movement to every pitch and <laughs> break it down. <laughs> what is your MT training and background like? Um, in high school, I went to a performing arts high school half a day. So I studied acting, some private voice, some dance. Um, college, I went to Penn State, you know, vocally had to really learn classical also, um, musical theater techniques, learning how to mix. Nobody knew what mixing was until 2003, um, really. That's when I went to college and it was like not even a term. Um, and just blending the voices and really figuring it out. In terms of pop vocals, that's all like, you know, imitating growing up. And then coming up with a system of, you know, what does it mean? And making up my kind of language that made sense to me to, to communicate to other singers. And I'm really big on visual teaching and like relatable, non-fancy language. Just like get to the problem and then be like, you know, bam, fix it. Have you got any funny audition stories that you can share with us? One that comes to mind is when, when you kind of like, follow the rule of like just say yes and then deal with it later because you never want to be like hard to work with so somebody was like oh, great that was great do you have anything else and I was like looking through my book and they're like do you have any evil songs and I was like uh-huh and I was like let me check my evil part of the binder like no of course I don't <laughs> so I went mm -hmm. this will do and I just did the music that makes me dance from funny girl evil <laughs> but like seriously like, let me check my evil folder let me just just all don't say no. All, <laughs> Just yeah. say, mm-hmm. And you're stuff like, stuff I know he's around. <laughs> what is your favorite part of teaching? Because I know, obviously, you said that you've kind of shifted more into that now. My favorite part is having somebody make a new sound for the first time in their entire lives, even if it happens in 10 minutes and they've been, like, trying and trying and they said they can't for, like, 25 years. And then in 10 minutes, I helped be a part of that is so invigorating buzz i'm buzzing can you say that i'm just buzzing i'm buzzing buzzing, buzzing. <laughs> where is your favorite place that you've ever visited in the world that's really hard but i probably have to say edinburgh oh really i love it so much it's just the most beautiful place ever um i obviously love london um just Ed i just always come back to edinburgh and I just have to say it like that. What do you like up there? There's a castle. Is there? The Edinburgh Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Is there? I'm not as I'm not as Scottish as you, clearly. Wow, you gotta go and you gotta have fried Mars bars, Van Offy pie. You gotta have haggis. Ooh. Nope, don't say that. It's not gross. I feel like it's, it's one of those things that sounds gross, then you have it and you're like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I don't know. It's fine. What was your first job in musical theatre and what did you learn from that job? Um, my first professional job was in the summer of 2006, my junior year of college, when all of the musical theatre kids drove to the Pittsburgh CLO in the Muni and they all auditioned and I got the summer season. And you know, the reason I got the summer season is because I went as a singer and the callback was to dance and I'm a tapper. So they had 42nd Street that summer. Um, I did Beauty and, the, Beauty and the Beast. So Beauty and the Beast, Grease, 42nd Street. I did the whole summer. 
the next summer I re-auditioned and I did Oklahoma, White Christmas and Cats, and my hips were broken. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was 15 years ago. Yeah, so I didn't have any ec professional equity points. It was yeah. like one of those, like you get your card, kind of like if you have a Broadway show, you just get your equity card. Um, and that was that was Pittsburgh. Have you got any funny onstage mishaps that you have encountered in your musical theater? Um, I know everyone has them like pulled up out of nowhere, but oh, okay. Um, what my first summer working at Pittsburgh CLO, I was watching, I was a creamer, like literally the creamer, like a huge thing. And I was on stage for seven minutes total. Like that was the stage time. And I had to wear a white onesie with a huge creamer on top. But backstage I was watching, I was like, oh, what a lovely song. I'm gonna watch Belle sing this song on the monitor. And I was sitting in my like gray hoodie cause I was cold and I ended up going on stage with my gray hoodie under my creamer costume. And I was marching to be our guest, be our guest. And everyone was looking at me weird. And I had like gone on stage with the gray hoodie and I thought I was getting fired. But I didn't. That's it. <laughs> what is your um, like favorite song to listen to when you need some motivation or some comfort? Ooh, okay. Hands down, the Megan Trainer album that has "Let Me Do," did, and I just woke up and I feel some type of way in the shower. Just if I'm feeling down, that is such a good. Either like you're on the street, motivated. That's my go-to play, play, play. Yeah. Yeah. What snack got you through quarantine? As if we aren't still doing it. But. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, I definitely like in the beginning of quarantine gained all of my weight plus some more and then I lost 30 pounds. So we're going to talk about the binging part of <laughs> not whole 30 quarantine. Um, I was eating at the beginning of quarantine as if I needed to eat my childhood favorites. Like I would have peanut butter and jelly and grilled cheese all the time and Oreos and like cinnamon toast crunch, you know? Um, so I would say, and like insomnia cookies, cause we have that here. I don't know if you guys have that. What would you say to anyone that wants to um, make their way into the industry nowadays? Obviously um, it's changing every day and changing rapidly, but what is your advice? Well, yeah, it's totally changing and it's a really hard industry to go in and it's harder than ever. There's no jobs for anyone. Um, definitely, if you're going to school for it, don't choose the one that's going to have you in debt the rest of your life. Choose the one that like you can get a well-rounded education. Um, train with as many people as you want, get different opinions. Um, say yes to everything in the beginning and then you can decide when you want to say to not say yes to everything. Um, and make sure you have a supportive community. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll round this off by doing some quick fire questions. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got seven for you. They're not deep. <laughs> Don't worry. It's all good. They're not deep. Okay. So let's get started. So we've got Beyonce or Britney? Beyonce. Summer or winter? Summer. Night or day? Day. Pop music or musical theater? Pop. I always feel like I just feel like I'm like offending the other choice. Tap or jazz? Tap. East Coast or West Coast? East Coast. Contemporary or Golden Age musical? Contemporary. Sorry. Broadway or off Broadway? <laughs> Broadway. I've seen some of the best plays I've ever seen off Broadway. So Yeah. It all has to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. Have you got anything else you would like to say to the people before we finish up? Um, I hate that it gets dark at 4.30. Well, it gets dark at like five. I really hate it. I think it was dark at like three here today. It was horrible. Cause I was walking back from my singing lesson and I was like, why is it dark? It feels like late. And then I'm like, I haven't got any time left to do anything. It's awful. I hate it. Guys, make sure you go and check out Natalie's website, Natalie's course. I will leave all the details in the description. She is amazing. Thank you so much, Natalie, for being here with me for a bit. Thank you for having me. So lovely. I hope you get better soon. Uh, <laughs> me too. I, <laughs> and I hope to see you in London soon. Come and do a nice concert. I'll be front row. Mm -hmm. I miss it. I can't wait. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.